What is storytelling? Simply said is using a communication medium like speech, drawing, music, video or photo to communicate an idea or a concept. While some mediums are easier to use for this notion of storytelling, photography is not the first thing that comes to mind. First let's think about what is a story. A series of events that have a beginning, middle and end. Usually the story starts in a very simple way and then something happens that forces the main character to be driven out of his comfort zone. And this thing that happens forces him or her to take things into his own hands and start the journey to find a solution. Along the way he might find a side kicker or a master, go through different challenges, nearly die physically or spiritually to only arrive at a result. The result doesn't always mean the character managed to solve the problem. Sometimes the character realizes the problem was not exactly a true problem and his true quest was something else. Now, before I talk too much about all this, you may be wondering, what's the point of storytelling in landscape photography? What would be the point? Is it all worth it? And if we are talking about storytelling and we need a character, are we the main character, the photographer, so we should include our journey? And my answer to all this is no, you are just an observer, you're just the person that is noticing and telling the story, so you need to think of, uh, outside of you. So in this case, who is the subject? Or what is your subject? What is your main hero? What is the point of attraction? What is the thing that you want to talk about in your story? Now, I think all these are perfect, legitimate questions and you should ask them. And I will give you my answers, but not yet. Just, just bear with me for one tiny minute. I think you can use photography to tell stories. In journalism, you can create a powerful story just by one image. In newborn photography or wedding photography, you can tell beautiful and powerful stories just by one image. But in landscape photography, my personal opinion that in only one image, you can create a brilliant, beautiful photo. But I don't know if that is enough for telling a story. Sometimes it's windy and you may decide that a longer exposure will tell the story better. And you are right. The viewer will take a look at your photo and will know for sure that it was a windy day because you captured in your photo the movement of the leaves. In some ways, stories in landscape photography become more powerful when they are created in series. The main difference is, in my opinion, the subject. I think the main character is a particular landscape or a particular element. The event that triggers the story is a special moment that made you stop and observe the landscape in a certain moment of its existence. But no matter how powerful such an image can be, it will never tell a complete story. So you can take the decision to observe that same element or some landscape over time. Or you can have a single moment approach where you create story of the same light moment by capturing the landscape in front of you in different ways. Wide tele, close-ups, details, textures, low angle, high angles, aerials, and all this with only one idea to mind, to create a better picture of what that moment in time looked like. I could say storytelling and landscape photography could be a better way to describe the place in a certain moment. A series that talks in images about the place. I also know that a series has to be consistent. Just like any story, it has to have a clear number of events. For example, the moment of the sunset, how the sun reaches his best spot. The sunset light, the bluish light that comes after and maybe a bonus, a moon rising in the distance, giving you, the photographer, the chance of creating a magical end to the moment. If you ask me about the number of photos, the answer is up to you. Just like in books, there are authors that describe the place in just one or two sentences and others on several pages. The number of photos is very much connected to your goal. Why you are there? What was the element that made you decide you'll stay and photograph from that place? I mentioned that you could capture the few moments of the sunset. But what if you are photographing a waterfall, for example? How all this talk applies to that? Again, this is just my way of seeing things and just like in real life, everyone has his own way of telling stories. But let's get back to the waterfall. I would start with a photo that shows the location and the entrance point to the waterfall and then I would try to capture the size of the fall and just like storytellers, maybe I would exaggerate a little bit. A wide angle lens might help me to force a perspective on things that would make the scene more spectacular and maybe just maybe I'll add some special effects like circular polarizer or a 10 stop ND filter for a dreamy look. After this I can't have only two photos in my story. 
My advice is to go for an odd number, minimum three photos, sometimes five or seven work better in, if the scene is too complex. Now in the end, let me tell you what is the purpose of all this talk. Have you ever noticed that when you come back from a photo shoot, you end up with so many photos that are similar and you don't have too much variation? Well, that is, I think, in my opinion, it's happening because you didn't photograph with a storytelling intent. The minute you think about the landscape in front of you with a storytelling in your mind and with the idea that you have to portray that landscape in a better way or the best way that you can possibly do, that is the moment that you will challenge your mind, your attention, your focus, your way of seeing things. You will try to approach photography of that place in a completely different manner and that will help you create so many variations of the same landscape and help you also to get original photos, interesting photos, unique photos, different photos, different perspective on things. I hope you found all this talk useful and you'll decide to subscribe to this YouTube channel. You can also support me by buying one of my editing courses, the link is in the description of this video. And until next time, keep on photographing because it's the only way that you can get better. Bye bye.